Thank you very much for the opportunity to share our results. Population-based screening with the use of total PSA reduces prostate cancer-specific mortality. Within the range of WHO calibrated 1.6 to 8 nanogram per ml, tPSA alone has a bad specificity and is not a good predictor of significant PCA. This comes along with a large proportion of overdiagnosis and overtreatment. For this reason, there is currently no population-based screening using tPSA. The maximum benefit of PSA screening was seen in young men 65 years of age or younger. However, this young population is at highest risk of suffering from overdiagnosis and overtreatment. Minus 2 pro PSA, in short P2 PSA, is a fraction of free PSA and a precursor of PSA. P2 PSA has a significantly better diagnostic specificity compared to tPSA or percentage FPSA. The prostate health index fee can be calculated by the use of a formula containing P2 PSA, FPSA, and tPSA. P was equally shown to have an improved specificity compared to tPSA. However, the use of percentage V2 PSA and fee was not yet studied in young men, and especially not in young men with repeat prostate biopsies. We prospectively studied serum samples of 769 men 65 years of age or younger from four sites in France and Germany with tPSA levels within the range of 1.6 to 8.0 nanogram per ml. The aims of our study were to analyze the sensitivity, specificity, and diagnostic accuracy of percentage B2 PSA and fee for the identification of PCA compared to tPSA and percentage of FPSA in men 65 years of age or younger. Secondly, we investigated the predictive value of percentage B2 PSA and fee for the diagnosis of PCA in initial versus repeat prostate biopsies. Finally, we studied the relationship of percentage B2 PSA dependent markers with the detection of significant versus insignificant PCA based on the price criteria. Uh, for statistical analysis, we used bivariate logistic regression and ROC AOC analysis of single parameters and of two different base models. Base model 1 contains age, prostate volume, and the result of DRE, tPSA, and percentage FPSA. Because tPSA and percentage FPSA are part of fee and we wanted to rule out confounding, we decided to use a second base model containing only age, prostate volume, and DRE. Both models were tested with or without percentage P2 PSA and fee. In addition to that, we constructed an artificial neural network containing both models and combinations. Finally, we used decision curve analysis for the evaluation of single parameters and the best prediction models on consequential clinical management of patients. For all patients, fee and percentage P2 PSA with AOCs of 0.73 and 0.72 were significantly better than tPSA and percentage FPSA with AOCs of 0.54 and 0.62. The P2 PSA-based parameters outperformed all clinical parameters. It is H, prostate volume, and DRE status in univariate analysis with a P smaller than 0.001. In multivariate analysis, the addition of percentage P2 PSA and fee to base model 1 produced a gain in predictive accuracy of 0.02 to 0.07 in AOC, for all patients and in those with initial and repeat prostate biopsy with a P smaller than 0.001. When added to base model 2, percentage P2 PSA and fee produced an AOC gain of 0.02 to 0.09 in the same cohorts. Um, to diagnose a significant prostate cancer, percentage P2 PSA and fee performed better than the common markers and clinical parameters with AOCs of 0.68 and 0.72 with a P smaller than 0.001. In multivariate analysis, percentage P2 PSA and fee added a gain of AOC of 0.01 to 0.02 to base model 1, P smaller than 0.001. The addition of base model 2 led to an improvement of diagnostic accuracy of 0.02 for percentage V2 PSA and 0.07 for phi in AOC. When compared with the best models and phi, the ANN analysis mostly shows small but non significant advantages. A significant advantage was only seen for the comparison of base model 1 with phi for the whole cohort and for the comparison of base model 2 with phi for men with significant PCA. All models were non-superior compared with fee as a single parameter. Considering the uncertainty of many patients before biopsy, the DCA was performed for fee, the best model, which was base model 2 plus fee, and the respective ANN, as well as for the traditional markers tPSA and percentage FPSA. The DCA for all patients resulted in a broader TP of pathological outcome of 20 to 70 percent for base model 2 plus fee and the corresponding ANN. Fee, as for single biomarker consideration, performed best with a TP of 25 to 70 percent. For patients with significant cancers, the ANN was a parameter with the broadest TP and the best net benefit. At initial biopsy, the base model with fee performed best. For repeat biopsy patients, base model 2, their respective ANN and fee outperformed the classical parameters. 
In general, phi was the best single parameter in DCA. In conclusion, percentage pre 2 PSA and even more so phi are more specific for the detection of PCA in men 65 years of age or younger than common use T-PSA and percentage F-PSA. This advantage is maintained for initial and repeat prostate biopsies. The detection of significant PCA can be improved using P2-PSA-dependent biomarkers. Compared to T-PSA in everyday practice, uh, percentage pre 2 PSA, phi and models can help making more meaningful decisions and improve counseling prior to prostate biopsies. Percentage B2 PSA and phi, especially in younger men, can be used to reduce overdiagnosis. In combination with more consequent use of active surveillance in non-significant PCA, a reduction of overtreatment may be possible. Thank you again for the possibility to share results.